you mind if I give you some suggestions on what you could do? Please do. Yeah. So what I think you should do. So I partnered with some guys and we're about to roll things out. And um, I'm just going to see if I can find. Just so I can show you, share with you what. We're doing with this product. Right? Yeah. Mm, okay. Not so Nodi. Are these guys. Who are me? August. Yeah. So we did 150,000 on this travel, oh. right? Uh, 206,000 Australian. So we're about to roll this out on Amazon. And so I told the partners to send me some pillows because I'm going to find some YouTube influencers to do a review on it. Mm. And I, I believe you should do the same thing for yourself. Find, I'm trying to find your website. Hold on. Let's see. Some, you're saying go, go, um, try to find some YouTube influencers to yep. showcase the product. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically really find, um, Oh, and here's another one you should try to go spend is, um, what did you use to fulfill your stuff? Uh, what do you What do you mean? When you're fulfilling, did you use any um, fulfillment software like Pledgebox? I don't know what that is. No, I I just I just um, you mean in terms of um, buying the shipping labels, or yeah, so no managing right all the addresses. So you just use Kickstarter's backend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the backer report. Yeah. yeah. So, so in the future, because I'm definitely, I think after you're done with your first version, I think you got a motorized version for your next one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hot request. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but if you use Pledge Box for your fulfillment okay. process, you can upsell in the back end, right? And, and I do think you could probably do some paid marketing on Ple Pledge Box. Um, because I've been getting emails from pledge box for people to buy products and they have a huge email list, you know, and then another person you could do, I'm trying to think of their name is, um, Oh shoot. You should go and cool backer. He's pretty cheap, right? Huh? I never heard of this. Yeah. Th these are all really, really, yeah. Things I probably should learn before. Yeah. But you get a cool backer. He'll do a post and he's pretty affordable, right? Um, and you'll get some, like, he's got a pretty big email list. And I'm trying to find. I feel like I should be taking notes. I'm going to be reviewing this YouTube video yeah. after we post it. No, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll send you this, right? Some info oh, on where you can do, like, um, there's companies where you can pay to get your product on there, right? This, oh, this, okay. Like Coolbacker is one of them. They, I think he charges like 50 bucks or something like that. But I'm pretty sure he'll do a product that exists today and send people to your website, right? So he creates like a, a – he sends out an email to all of his – Yeah, so followers. he'll send an email to his list. And then he features people like, let's just see, I'm just going to click on one, hang on. You know, like this little pocket yeah. tool, he does a little write-up on it. You know what I mean? Oh, that looks good. Yeah. And, and he'll do it based off of your photos and everything. You don't have to send him something. But he's been growing pretty big. Uh, so you might want to submit your pro project. I, I just kind of question, usually he promotes Kickstarter projects, right? But maybe he'll do it for you just because you got a really cool product, right? And then mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who else you could do. Like I, I would type in um, bug killing bloggers. Oh no! Right, let's see, bug killing bloggers. or bug catching bloggers. Okay. I'm trying to think like. Yeah, if you find bloggers that's related to your product, mm -hmm. and they write about your art, like if they write about your product, 
so like I'm, I'm just going to do an example right um, I had a lot of people write about the wallet. I think it's been. Is this, is this the wallet that um, you you made? Yeah. So this is the wallet. Oh, home. nice. You can find yeah, it. I want to see it actually. If you just type in that bandit extra bandit extra small minimum wallet, so I did like Ooh. almost sixty five thousand, right? That looks cool. Yeah, with the it, yeah, it's very minimal. It's got a band around it. Yeah. Is this like part of the the ED the everyday carry type of people, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I think you should send a product to Uncrate. Uh, Uncrate. Yeah. So sometimes they'll do it. So like. So when we did 77,000, um, I'm just going to kind of show you the stats, right? So we took a shot. I, I told Mike Bond, he did the titanium pen. I said, if we send it to Uncrate, he's willing to possibly post it on their website. And they're one of the top bloggers like on the planet, right? And so we sent it out to him. And let me find the kick track, right? Um, this is the this is the titanium your first Kickstarter project the titanium pen. Yeah, it, it was it was Mike Bond's product. I was just doing the marketing, right? Oh, oh, okay. Let me find a kick track on Ti Two Pen mm, okay. because this is what you got to understand. Like, if you send one to if you send one to Uncrate and he just happens to go, I'm just gonna do it, right? This is what happened. So, see oh, that? Oh, I see that. Yeah, seven thousand. Yeah, that is when Uncrate posted this pen. Wow. So that That's first day, this ad went up on Uncrate. We did seven thousand, and that was that jump right there. And it like sustained too. That's crazy. Well, this is like the it sustained for the next day, but this was like Kickstarter doing their thing. But this, oh. this day and this day was Uncrate, you know? Yeah. And when we saw that happen, we're just like the power of Uncrate, you know? Like, so this is kind of a normal Kickstarter. See what I mean? Like, it tends to drop down, you I know? See. Whereas yours, yours is incredible. Like, it just sustained, you know what I mean? I, I think I think it was just the, the scale is lower, Andrew. It's just, this just... All, all low <laughs> compared to that titanium pen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you just you just zoomed in a little bit, it would it would look <laughs> like the couple. Oh, of look here, check it out. Okay, I'm zooming in, right? <laughs> so this is yours. 900, 900, 900, mm -hmm. right? And then if we go to Mike Bond, right? And, mm -hmm. and your product. Oh, I can't zoom in. There you go. You know, you got to remember, Mike Bond was selling a $50 pen, right? Mm -hmm. Where your price point was $35. So you had a lot of, like, if we translate that to backers, right? I mean, look mm -hmm. at the backers you're getting. That's that's really impressive considering. Oh, the number of people. Right? When, mm -hmm. when I was doing Mike Bond's promotion, man... I was pushing out to every blogger on the planet. Like, wow. I would spend four hours a day reaching out to every single pen blogger on the planet. You That's know? a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then look at the drop off five. Right. I don't, I don't even think she yours. Like, you had a five here, but it was already like how many days in? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Uh, Pretty impressive. And then if I show you another example, right? Um, and this is good information for everybody, right? Like everybody has ideas and they want to get it out there. And and mm -hmm. the reason why I say your product is a good product because you did barely minimum advertising or even 
organic pushes to people. You just like let Kickstarter ride based off of what you did on TikTok. And and that's that's important to know, right? Because of your success on kick uh, TikTok, it, it translated to sales on Kickstarter. Um, yeah, got lucky there. Yeah, like I'll show you a few things that was happening with with Bandit, right? Oh wait, that's not the kick track. I'm trying to find the kick track. So that's important. Th this is this one. This one was yeah. Your your product, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, but it's not coming up. Because there was things I was doing to during the Kickstarter. In fact, let me see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time. Let's see. It's been so long that it's probably like, we're not ever going to find them anymore. Mm. But. And that's part of kick, Kickstarter, right? You just find whatever is going to take you to the next level. And so I did a lot of updates. Same thing with TI2 Pen, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, mine was unusual, right? So if you look at it, it kind of grew. Like it, it was just... Oh, yeah, I see that. And then, and then I ramped up what I was pushing online. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you see this going up here, I was getting a lot of bloggers blogging about it, right? I see, yeah. And, and right when it was about here to 4000 I told everybody they can get an additional bandit for, like, $10. <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. So that, that drove the sales more. Yeah, that's really impressive. Right, so there's creative things you can do in the updates, like telling people about stretch goals, you know, telling them they can get a second one for like a discounted price. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And and it helps in sales. And definitely if you can get people to write about it, but it's hard now. It's hard to get bloggers to write about Kickstarter projects because sometimes the Kickstarter projects fail. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So but but I do commend you, like you succeeded in so many different levels that what you did is simply amazing, especially wow. with how many different parts you had. And did you have any business partners with helping you? No. Yeah, Just this is a solo you. project. Yeah. Right. So this is impressive, man. Great job on what you did. You know what I mean? Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. There is one thing I, I, I should mention. Yeah. Is that I didn't come up with a couple bug name. Yeah. A friend <laughs> of mine. I have I have some friends that I show prototypes to and they are brutally honest friends. And that's super important as a designer, just having friends that will tell you if your idea is crap or not. And um, they help me. They'll just be like, no, that's ugly. Like, turn it off. And I'll be like, okay, I'll change it. Yeah. And like, um, what was yeah, the and then, what was, was that? The, what was the name you came up with first then? I didn't I, I was I just had a generic name. It was just like spider catcher or something like that but i i knew that wasn't a good name and me and my friend were like kind of brainstorming some ideas for names and she came up with cup of bug and i was like that's it we both knew it was like that's it yeah so no, it's definitely a good name right and and your artwork kind of goes back in a day of like when they would have titles like that cup of bug you know what i mean yeah yeah like uh, the old timey kind of feel yeah but, but I would find product influencers, go out and, and find them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the bigger ones are going to charge money. But if you find maybe smaller ones that maybe have 10,000 subscribers, right? Um, yeah. They may review you, you know what I mean, and, and help you out. Um, yeah, that would be really good. Yeah, I need to push more more on the yeah, the marketing side and just getting the word out and not trying to rely on like the lucky viral video type, type of thing. Yeah. I think you should still go for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's been helping you, right? Uh, yeah. It doesn't cost Definitely. any money, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm still, I'm still trying. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I lost my touch a little bit with the viral videos or maybe we're 
we're past the the hype phase of Cup of Bug, maybe. I don't know. And so, then keep in mind, yeah. there, there's not just YouTube influencers, but you can find influencers on TikTok and, and Instagram that you can send your product to for them to review. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. I, I've never done that before, Andrew. Yeah. So have you had experience with that? Like, how do you kind of, how, how do you kind of like work with, with influencers? Do you kind of give them like an affiliate link? Is that how they usually work? Affiliate links, right? Or yeah. Yeah. So, so you can create like, um, Oh, that's the one I got to show you. Hold on. Um, hmm. So if you want to track how the influencer is doing, you sign up for a bit.ly link. And then you create a special bit.ly link for them to share on their site. Oh, that's what that is. I always see that on people's profile, like bit.ly. And I just think it's like a shortened URL, but it's actually some kind of. um, Yeah. So you can track where they're coming from, how many people are clicking on it. So that this is one thing I would use. So say I'm reaching out to a bunch of influencers or bloggers online. Mm -hmm. I'd create a I'd create a a bit.ly link, right, to send to them to see if they even click on the email, right? Mm. And so as I'm reaching out to, like, a specific group of influencers, if I'm sending them bit.ly links, then I realize if I'm going in the right direction online. You know what I mean? I see. Or That's I'm the, or feedback. Or I'm the right introduction. You know what I mean? So if I send them something, I say, hey, I got this product. I think it'd be great for you to check it out. Send them a bit.ly link. And then I know if they click it or not. You know what I mean? Because you need to gauge. Part of marketing online is you need to gauge if, say you're spending one or two hours in one direction with a group of people. You want to know if if your time invested in that direction is going to equate to promoting your product. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, like when I was Google searching, you know, bug catching bloggers, maybe that's not the right one because they're just catching bugs to collect them. Mm-hmm. Right. I think, and you can find comparable products, right? So a comparable product, even though they're killing them, is that, um, what is that one gun they kickstart and it just kicks out salt to kill flies? Bug assault. Bug assault. Yeah. Your product reminds me of bug assault, but mm. you're keeping the bugs alive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So so if you look at so that's what I would do, like when I'm searching for marketing stuff, I'll see who's being successful in the wrong direction. So um when I did TI2 pen and, and bandit, I go, okay, there's comparable products out there. Who was writing about them? So mm. if you go bug assault right and then you can kind of see in the google searches like who was like writing about them you know i I see oh that's a great strategy andrew thank you for sharing that this is like that's that's the whole part of this right Mm. i'm gonna share whatever i know you know we know where you started from which which is great to know like you can use tiktok to launch your brand right But it's also good to know, like, who's promoting other products so that you can try to drive marketing one way. You know what I mean? And then when my business partners in Australia starts launching on Amazon, I'll be able to share that information, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, the one disadvantage we have as entrepreneurs is that we don't have a large capital funds. We, we have great products. Mm-hmm. How do we get this out there? We, I think we're kind of like the mom and pop shops of the internet. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, basically. So we got to help each other grow online mm-hmm. and share information. That's, that's what I think is, is this channel is all about. Is sharing the experiences of how to get a product on Kickstarter or crowdfunding and then seeing what we can do afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, Andrew, I think this is a great resource for entrepreneurs. Like, I, I, 
I would totally watch this too. Um, there, even there's just, you know, yeah. there's just so many good products that do not succeed because we don't have the capital. Like, definitely. Um, I want to show one more thing to you, and it, and this was impressive, but it, it it was his way to grow big. So, did you hear about the pop socket story? Um. Yes. Uh. I, the pop. That's the. That's the one on the phone, right? Yeah. 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 So, I've seen the Kickstarter for that one. It, so he he only did eighteen thousand, right? Yeah. He didn't go that big on the Kickstarter, but he grew like a crazy huge business from it. Yeah. Well, people don't know about Pop Socket story, right? Let me see if I can find it real fast. So he, he, and I'll send you this link too, because you need to read this, right? Okay. Because, and, and this is what I'm trying to defy, right? So he went from Kickstarter to tens of millions of units, right? Mm -hmm. But what happened is, and I'm hoping I can find it here real quick. Yeah. Okay. And it might not be on here, but so bottom line, what happened to him? And it might be here. There you go. In the summer of 2012, Barnett ended up losing his house during a series of Colorado wildfires. Oh, shit. The insurance money he received for lost contents, he was able to fund the business early on. Like, look how much he put. He put over $500,000. Into pop sockets after the Kickstarter. Yeah. Wait, is that like five hundred thousand dollars? What do you spend five hundred thousand dollars on? Like advertising or everything on the business to get to roll it out. Oh, and sure. so, like the the hardest part about getting a product into stores, right? So like this is this is what cost money right but if you look at it because he was in best buy amazon bed bath and beyond target walmart barnett da, 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 he was able to grow yeah what people, what people don't understand about retail is and this is why i couldn't get my wallet since the retail i still think about it right is you need the capital to be able to manufacture so say you get it in Best Buy and Ben, you know, like Walmart across the country. You know, you're talking about you need. So even with your four thousand, you probably couldn't fill up all the Walmart. Do you know Sorry, what I mean? Sorry, what was that, Andrew? I think I had that. You know, your four thousand units you have. Yeah. You couldn't fill up an order for Walmart. Yeah, no. Yeah, we're not trying to shoot for the stars out here. We're just right. trying to <laughs> just go small. And, yeah. and that's why he raised that much money so that he can get it. In, he can get it into Best Buys and Walmarts. But then it grew, right? Like he sold. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He sold over 70 million products, right? But yeah, not everybody has this cash flow. And I know it. You know what I mean? Nobody has that. But I do believe if all the small entrepreneurs like us get together, okay, we share our experiences on how to market to the consumer, mm -hmm. that we can knock it out of the ballpark. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think just sharing this knowledge yeah i'm all about sharing knowledge too and and trying to help other entrepreneurs so this is this is huge um yeah but uh, oh, Andrew, tell me how wait so i've never tried to go for retail so you're you're saying like he had to have five hundred thousand dollars before he even got us got attempted to get into walmart because like why not just show the Walmart executives the product and then they're like, oh, we want it. And then be like, okay, can I get an order for 
can I get five hundred thousand dollars? What people don't understand is right is yeah, you need to make the product before you can sell them the product, right? They and won't. So, oh yeah, they won't. Oh yeah. Oh, that, and, yeah and in many cases, mm-hmm. when you so, and, and the reason why I didn't go into retail for the wallet is mm-hmm. one, they wanted about somewhere between 35% to 50% profit on the retail price, right? So the stores are going to take that cut. Then on top of it, right? Mm-hmm. You, they're not going to get there. So say you deliver them a thousand units. They're not going to write you a check right away. No. Right. They'll, they'll, some of them will. And some of them won't, right? Okay. And I'm pretty sure Pop Socket guy kind of put a lot of it in marketing. Mm-hmm. It's just because you have it in the stores doesn't mean that people are going to buy it from the shelves, right? Right. Yeah. Think of it as your TikTok. You did something on TikTok and that translated to sales on your, mm-hmm. TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. If he gets into the stores, He's going to get a check maybe a little bit delayed within 30 days net or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's got to start rolling and making product to roll it out in all the Walmarts and Best Buys, <laughs> which, which costs a lot of money, right? Right, yeah. Then on top of it, you know, ship it out to all these places. And then on top of it, marketing costs. Because marketing has to come from somewhere. It can come organic or you pay for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and all, all the millionaire friends that I have met in my life, they said marketing is, they put a lot of money into marketing and that's how they've made their millions. I see. Yeah. It makes, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, hmm. but, you, you, can, you can trick it a little. Like, you don't have to get the big influencers. You just need influencers that, that has a pretty good following of 10,000, you know, subscribers. And they're mm-hmm. going to be a lot cheaper than the ones that have a million subscribers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or even if you get somebody, you might be able to find somebody like starting up like me that might have a thousand subscribers. And they just... They may not even know about your product, but because you reached out to them, they go, oh, yeah, I'll put face on your product. Pretty cool. <coughs> mm-hmm. And then you might get, you know, maybe five sales from that. You know what I mean? But eventually, if you keep pushing every day to people and reaching out to them to share your product that is for sale, they might reach out. The smaller guys will, will reach out more than the bigger guys. Hmm. But I would reach out to Uncrate and send them one. Yeah. This kind of reminds me. I was I was watching a, a video about how this guy, this entrepreneur, made a brand. Um, it's called, like, Tabs. It's, like, a chocolate that's supposed to make couples, like, uh, yeah, Tabs chocolate. Um, I didn't know about the product before. Apparently, it's gone viral on TikTok. But I didn't learn about it until I saw this interview. And he detail in this. You, there's a YouTube video, and he details um, how the marketing worked. I've heard mixed reviews about the product, so I don't endorse the product or anything like that. But I thought that his marketing strategy was very interesting. And basically, it was that, um, like you said, he instead of going for like big influencers, he went for basically any influencer at one point. And then he realized that it was more cost effective to just hire creators. Like no one, people without any followers at all, not, not a single one, but just creators. And he would just give them the product and they would take videos. So um, there's literally on TikTok like hundreds, he said of tabs, chocolate creators. And they all have like some weird variation of tabs in their name and um they just pump out material and because tiktok like i said earlier like you don't have to have any following to go viral they're just trying to go shotgun effect 
on virality and one of them hits every other day out of the hundreds and that just keeps pumping up sales for them and apparently he's doing like millions in sales or something i don't know something crazy but yeah there's strategies like that that are just wild yeah i'll, I'll send you like thoughts of what you can do for marketing you know okay uh, yeah i really appreciate that right mm-hmm. but it but it i do believe your product needs to get out there you know thank you yeah yeah marketing is my my weakest point andrew yeah weakest point like i I don't even know how to run a paid advertisement, honestly. Um, I just, yeah. So this is all really, really good information for people like me who are kind of like they approach entrepreneurship yeah. without that much marketing experience. The only reason why I brought this guy up is that's not me. I am not going to like take $500,000 and plot it towards a direction, right? I, that, I, yeah, that's a crazy huge risk. Yeah. yeah. I, I do feel... You know, despite Shark Tank saying, "Hey, if you if you don't make this amount in a year, you're 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 not a business, right?" Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of for the small guy, especially if it's an inventive product like yours, right? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and knowing that you only use TikTok before you launched on Kickstarter. You, you got room to market yourself and, and I'll send you a whole bullet list of things you could do. And then you could try to reach out and try to tackle that. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Maybe I could, I could try some of the strategies that you use and then we could do a follow-up video on like how the results work. Like I could show yeah. some of the, 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 the conversion rate or return on investment on those strategies or something and yeah. I'll be really transparent about it and it'll help a lot of entrepreneurs. Maybe that would be fun. Oh, yeah. sure. like, like, you know, the one, the one thing you got to understand is. So, so I, I have a marketing background. That's, that's what I've done for like probably 15 over 15 years. Right. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I'm really impressed right now with all the stuff you're showing me. And so what happened is, you know, I took some of that and used it on the online space. And what you got to understand about this travel pillow, this travel mm-hmm. pillow wasn't succeeding at first, right? They, they were actually, they were actually at here. So they were at 7,000 when I came in on board with them. And, and oh, so wow. I, I, I suggested for them that I said, Hey, look, your whole your whole approach is is wrong. Um, I I feel you got a great product, mm-hmm. and and then we re, relaunched, and we did you know it went from like they were trying to achieve. Oh, and this is another thing that's weird. Ready? Okay. So, see how they have a goal of thirty three thousand. Yeah. So I told them thirty three thousand is really. Even though I know that's what you need to make for your manufacturing run, but for a travel pillow, it didn't equate to the Kickstarters, right? And I told them to lower, I told them this, right? Because this is what happens on Kickstarter. I said, if you lower your funding goal, so their funding goal on this one was, I don't know if they show it anymore, was 5,000. <laughs> And they're like, what do you mean, Andrew? If we have a lower funding goal, we're going to make more money? Like, isn't that the whole purpose of, like, trying to raise the funds is to, like, do your minimum fund and then the Kickstarters jump on? I said, but for a travel pillow, it didn't make sense that you're going to raise that amount. And if you don't fund right at the beginning, you're going to have a hard time. And and it already showed because their first one didn't really equate to that. Wow. Right. Yeah. Whereas yours, you defied odds, man. Like you had a twenty thousand dollar girl and you made it. Oh uh, yeah. I didn't think I was gonna make it, Andrew. I was just like, eh, we'll just put it on there and see what happens. But yeah. wait, going back to that travel pillow, wait, so I just noticed so it actually the first run was unsuccessful yeah. and then 
they tried it again in Australia, like Kickstarter Australia or something like that. No, they, they were always in Australia. Oh, oh, okay. So they just they just reposted it onto Kickstarter, and yeah, then so, it wasn't successful. So what it, what happen is, I was doing a project and I was reaching out to them to do a cross promotion for my. I had a, I launched a titanium pen, right? Okay. And then Nicole reached out, goes, "Hey," and I thought these guys were doing good, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then they, Nicole reached out and says, "How are you raising money for your titanium pen?" And then I looked at their project, and they weren't doing too well. And mm -hmm. so I, I asked them. I said, "Hey, let's jump on a Zoom, right?" Okay. And I talked to them about their project. Like, so if you notice, like, this was their. So uh, I'll tell you my secret, right? On a Kickstarter for me, is. I call it a one, two, three punch. So on a Kickstarter is, is this. This is punch one. This is what people read on, on their phones and on a website, which is this title. Okay. Right? So if you don't get them on the title, your second shot is the video, right? Mm. And so the video, this is their video, right? Now, if you don't get them on the video... Your last shot to get them, to get their interest, is right here at the top. Right here. If you don't oh. get them here, people are gone, right? Mm. Yours, what you did very well is, you said, right here's your title, The, the Cup of Bug, a no-kill bug catcher. Boom, that's it. You got me at that title. <laughs> nice. Right? And okay. I knew what it was by, by looking at it. It was a cup on an orange, so I don't have to be close to the bug, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, and then you said the cup and paper method on the stick, which is your description. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of it, your video, which is the two punch, right? Really just went out and it just showed exactly. Hold on. Like you just showed, well, you kind of delayed it a little bit, right? Because most Kickstarters, you got to get them in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't get them in the first 30 seconds, but you already got me at number one. Oh, I see. Okay. You already got me here. The cup of bug, a no-kill bug catcher, and this photo, right? So the, the video didn't have to sell me. I was already sold. And then up here, you just showed what it did at the top. Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas these guys, like, they had a whole bunch of, I said, people don't read these days. <laughs> I told them. I yep. said, they don't read that much. And then you got this thing, and I'm confused on what's happening. Right? Yeah. And so so I told them, I said, one, your, your title's pretty good, which is like the travel pillow that's not a pillow. But then it was kind of weird, like, the type, the the name of it is like, not not I. I'm like I didn't get it, right? Yeah, doesn't. But not clear. Then then we went and the image was different, right? So on this one, we had the solution right at the top. Mm, so when I came sure. in and we relaunched Not Noti and I became partners with them, I said you need to show how it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the yeah. video reflected that too, right? So the video, let's see if we'll play. So I said travel pillows be like toilet seat. <laughs> Not only if you like cool, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I fed that throughout the whole campaign. You know what I mean? Wow, this video is really well shot. Yeah. It looks really, really pro. Yeah, so we... I coordinated what we needed to shoot. The partners in Australia hired a studio to, to film how it works, right? Mm -hmm. And we showed people in the video how this works. And then I did the post production on it, right? Oh wow! So you actually you were involved with the post production for the video too? That's crazy. Yeah. So I, I came in as a partner, slight paid, right? Mm -hmm. And. 
And then we use the marketing agency to help us do the Facebook ads and Google ads. I see. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, you guys killed it. That's that's amazing. I see like at, as a non-marketing person, like I would I would have just given like if if a product I put on a Kickstarter didn't sell well, I would just give it up right there. I wouldn't think that there was a marketing issue, you know what I mean? But this totally makes sense because like I love this this profile view of it that really goes through what what this is about. Yeah, that yeah, that previous campaign didn't have this picture, right? So yeah, the, the other one was confusing. You saw the toilet seat, you just saw a headband, and then yeah. you had terrible illustration, right? Yeah. And, and I, told him, I said, just go hire hire a model out there in the studio and take this shot. I told him specifically take this shot and people will get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. And we and we could have we could have made this a million dollar Kickstarter because they were throwing in a paid ad, and I think we were getting a. So for every hundred dollars we spent, we would get three to five ROI, which is return on ad spend. So what that means is, if we threw a hundred dollars in 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 ad spend, we were making three three to five hundred dollars in sales. Wow. Yeah. And that's how most companies are getting to the million dollar mark. But the partners in Australia said at one point it was dropping. We were averaging somewhere between five to seven ROI at the beginning of ad spend. And then it dropped to three to five. And they're like, no, we don't want to go below that. And the marketing company said, oh, you're still doing good, man. And we could have taken it past a half million dollars, but the partners were just like, no, we don't want to just break even. Do you know what I mean? They wanted to make a stop or, or have some stop over. I uh, see. But, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is there is there something like that's like I, I, I guess it's like symbolic almost to get to that million mark because it's like this thing is just a, a banger, right? And it that builds that brand value that that is worth more than if you did not get a million dollars. It's like you want to tell everyone that this is a product that everyone's hyped for, and then there's almost like a like. But a, but, but keep this in mind, right? Hmm. If you're able to like do a three to five or even seven ROA return on ad spend, right? Keep in mind, there's a lot of millionaires out there that will loan you a dollar to get a dollar 20 buck. Hmm. So if you can prove to them that you're doing an ad spend of a hundred, say, say you're spending like a thousand bucks, but you're getting 5,000 in sales, right? They will loan you the money to continue your ad spend. As long as they're getting a dollar 20 back on every dollar they loan you. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that kind of just keeps fueling the the fire, I guess. Yeah, like um, like mm -hmm. if if we can get, it'd be interesting to do an ad spend on your thing, mm -hmm. right? On Cup of Bug. Okay. Only I'm because yeah. you were able to do. I'm trying to find. Where's the money? Oh wait, campaign. You were able to do this organically. <laughs> And I mean, when I mean organically, is you did not do an ad spend. I, I did. So I did do a a two day. I think I spent about seven hundred dollars on Instagram ad spend. Right. I don't know if that counts, but I don't think it did well. And I just took it off after a couple of days because I was like, I don't want to lose seven hundred dollars. So I just yeah canceled it. But I I. I I, I know that I should. It's one of those things I know I should do it, but I just don't know how to optimize it at all. And I'm, yeah. And I was yeah. just like, you know what? We're just going to take it off. So I, yeah. Other than that, I, yeah, it's pretty much organic. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Like if, if, sure. If yeah. you do a little sample ad spend and you can track that to equate to some money, right? Mm hmm. I know a couple of people that can help you upscale it. 
Oh, nice. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, well, we got to prove to them that you're going to be able to like say they'd let you borrow a thousand, you'd have to pay them back twelve hundred. Oh, that, geez. Yeah. But that just depends on if you can prove to them that you're doing at least somewhere between three to five return on ad spend. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah that'll be interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, if for anything, like I'm willing to learn, you know, and, and just try it out. Cause I believe, you know, th that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Just trying different things and seeing what, what works. Yeah. yeah so I'm going to find out. So I, when I send you an email about a few things you could do organically, mm -hmm. I'm going to find out about pledge box because pledge box, because I fulfilled on pledge box, I'm on their email list and I'm being, I've been getting products, you know, really cool products being sent to me via email. Mm. And I have a feeling that their email ad spend or, um, to be in an ad for their email list is going to be pretty affordable. Okay. And, so and even if I'm not doing a, this is after the Kickstarter, they'll still let me. Yeah. So on. I'm getting a lot of emails from Pledgebox mm -hmm. that have products as after Kickstarter. Oh, I see. I see. Right. Yeah. I'm getting some that's while they're funding, but some of them already has, has passed funding. Right. You just mm -hmm. got to think about it. Like this is the market. Pledge box is used for after Indiegogo and after Kickstarter. Oh, I see. So definitely cool, innovative products. Pledge box is the market to spend some money up to be on their email list. Right. I see. Yeah. Wow. So there, there's like no, how does the targeting work though, Andrew? Like, like obviously not everyone's going to be interested in a couple of bugs. So it's like, if it just like goes to a, a very generic email list, like that will hurt the, the return rate. Right. Pledge box been doing like, I, I think they're not dropping with spam because you know, like I'm a, I'm a creator on pledge box using it to fulfill. Right. And upsell after Kickstarter. Okay. So them sending out the email list, I don't think so is falling into spam or exhausting their list because oh, they're right. always growing. And I think you got to like, go on Indiegogo for a cup of bug. Oh, Did for you... a cup of bug? Wow. Yeah. So, so I've so... already got the manufacturer. Isn't it isn't it Indiegogo just like Kickstarter where like you're trying to get the manufacturing costs or something? No, I know it's so, like so Indiegogo doesn't require for you to be a new product. Oh They're really? Launching products to help creators raise more funds. So it, oh, it makes yeah. sense for you to launch on Indiegogo after you do like a little bit more TikTok videos letting people know that you know you're going back to Indiegogo. Now, I see. Wow. Now, okay. the way, so on your Kickstarter list, did you send out like an email to everybody to let them know if, if they want to be on an email list? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the good thing is, you know, you let everybody know that you got the website. Right. Mm. Did you get any sales from that? Yeah. Um, what is it? I I started posting on social media again. It hasn't been doing that well, but like magically, um, one of the one of the like UK entertainment companies called Lad Bible. Yeah. I'm not sure if you heard that one. They posted uh, the Cup of Bug on their Facebook, so it went crazy. So um, I got a lot of sales from that. And uh, I think right now is is probably dropping off, but um, that was really nice of them. So, you know. So you got to find more people like them on, on Facebook. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, not sure how to do that, but 
yeah they just they just reached out to me and were like hey can we use it for our facebook and who yeah. was that lab bible yeah these guys yep yeah so yeah, yeah they... so there's so you can find more people like these guys right is these guys yep yeah but they posted it onto their their facebook page um so yeah it it went yeah if you look up facebook yeah and then oh yeah, yeah they have a big yeah you could see how many i i don't even know what that number is it's got too many digits behind it but there's a lot of, there's a lot of people like that like that facebook page yeah so so you, you got to find more people like them and then what you do is you message them right yeah i don't even know how to approach guys like that i uh, yeah yeah it probably costs a lot of money too um to get them to post about you oh wow yeah so you just gotta search for comparable people like these guys right and then you just go out and contact them oh <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> i didn't even see that link yeah right um, okay yeah i hey. i need to reach out more to them mm -hmm. yeah so if you find other facebook pages they all have contacts mm -hmm. or let me see some of them, yeah, all of them have some kind of email contact. Or you can contact them through their website, which is most times it's at the bottom. Submit your content. Mm -hmm. Right? These are these are the things that I'm doing like during the campaign or before the campaign, right? And the, this is kind of things you got to find people like or here, like Gossamer. These guys always, so they're kind of similar, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, so so you just got to find, like, people that do, like, this and, like, these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if you get them where they're not as big as on Crate, like, Aws Awesomer, I think, will we'll feature your product, and you'll get some sales from it. Oh, right? wow, okay. Um, here, right? Yeah, I'll the, reach out to them. Right? Gadget blog, gadget, gadget, gadget bloggers. So you'll see all the like gadget flow. These guys are hard to get into, like his model gadget flow, right? But okay. like gadgets here, um, she the owner manages that, she'll probably feature you, right? You can look uh -huh. up blogs and website right mm -hmm. crunch gear is going to be tough because they're really big gadgeteer is big but she's still approachable okay. um, slash gear might definitely uncrate send something to uncrate you know okay geeky gadgets might be something so really what i did was type in gad gadget bloggers you know mm. And go reach out to them. How, how much does this usually cost to have them write about you? So the awesomer. So what you're hoping is they're just going to like feature you, your product. For free? Yeah, most of them. Wow. Not the big okay. ones. The big ones are like paid, right? Yeah. But like the awesomer, like the awesomer might do it for free. Um, Gadgeteer might do it just because they're filling content for their readers, right? I see, I see. Win, win, right? They get they get a showcase content for their readers. You get a few more sales, right? Mm -hmm. Like these guys are new. I haven't seen the really gadget. Really gadgets, okay. You know, you yeah. Somebody who's going to write something about you, right? I see. So usually it's not it's not paid. Oh shoot! I should have done this. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is what I do when I'm doing a Kickstarter. I reach out to a whole bunch of people, but you know, unless you have something special, 
they're not going to promote you as much. But your cup of bug is it, so unique that I, I believe you're going to reach out to all these bloggers. Like, um, I'll just let you know, like, Beer Hungry was a big one, right? He got Gear Hunger got to a point that he was able to sell it to another company. Wow, the whole blog because it was so valuable. That's crazy. Uh, I, I think he had a big email list, right? Because Gear Hungry promoted a few products of mine and it equated to sales, right? Um, nice, yeah. Another one you should do is Gear Blogs, right? Gear blog. Okay. But you got like Gear Patrol, Blessed with Stuff, Gear Junkie, Cool Material, Hype Beast, right? Mm. Not all of them. Some of them are going to come back for, oh, we charge this much for me to be on our site. You got Man of Many, right? Um, cool Material, I think, would do yours without charging you, but it might. I mean, some of them. What they try to do is they try to get in, they try to eventually get so big so that they're charging people for their ads, right? Mm -hmm. um, to do advertisement. But there's always a shot in the dark where your product is unique enough that they'll talk about it and write I see. it. So, yeah. I mean, I don't mind spending, well, I mean, it depends on how much it is, but yeah, I don't mind spending a little bit on it. Yeah. That'd be so, cool to get into a blog. Yeah. High, con high con consumption is another good one. Um, high, high consumption, okay. Yeah, because they, they just do like lifestyle for guys. You know what I mean? And, it, and I think it's who you're trying to reach out to see if they're going to write about you. Mm -hmm. And local, yeah. like local news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's something you should reach out to your, your local newspaper, right? Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I definitely want to try to like, I was trying to get into some farmers markets and sell at farmers markets. Um, but none of them have replied back to me yet, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, farmers markets is tough. I was trying to do farmers markets, you know? Yeah. But, uh, Were you yeah. able to get in to any of them? Well, what was your experience with that? It was good. It didn't translate to sales. I mean, it was a mini wallet that people didn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like even mini wallets today is still tough. Like if you look at everybody in a place and you look at their wallets, not many people have mini wallets, right? Really? I thought they were pretty popular for like, especially guys because they put the wallet in the back pocket and they don't want to sit on it, right? Yeah. No, the front pocket. we'll see a lot of traditional wallets out there. It's still still kind of a niche. It's not mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm going to give this wallet to somebody and it's going to be their heirloom wallet forever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, how would I say, some of the people that I know that bought it, they didn't use it because they just lost it. All the time. It was, it was like so small that they lost. They lost it. Oh man, it was like hey. so two of them was like my daughter and the boyfriend at the time. And they were just losing like she would lose it in the purse. My daughter would lose it in the purse. You know, the boyfriend, he's just like, I don't know where I put it. It's just gone like the keys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Yeah, yeah. And, and then it's flooded, right? It's flooded with a lot of competition, right? Like right yeah. now, you don't have much competition. You know what I mean? Not a whole... Yeah, there are some, yeah, but there's not. it's not as competitive as some other stuff, yeah. Yeah, you, unique enough that I believe a lot of these bloggers will write about it. Cool. You know? Yeah, um, I will definitely try those out, Andrew, I, and I will report back on what's how that how, how that goes yeah and then we could figure out like the bitly thing and yeah and, and, and you should, you should time it you should time an indiegogo right when you're about getting closer to christmas 
really. Wait, but okay, but since I'm already selling the cup of bug on the website, why why would people be in, what would incentivize people to purchase on the Indiegogo? I guess because you'll give them a better deal than on your website. Oh, like say you give them two for you know at a discounted price. Right. But then oh. it's it's all kind of marketing fluff, right? Okay, okay. So that's better what, than just offering sorry, that's better than just offering the you, you try to sell it in bulk, right? And so mm -hmm. you're only gonna offer two packs, five packs, ten packs on Indiegogo. Oh, I see, I see. So and you discounted price force people to buy multiples that you can do a bulk bulk production is basically is right. what you're saying. Oh, it, okay. That makes sense. Like you ever go to a used car lot and they're all on sale? Yeah. 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 It, it, they're not really on sale. They oh. just <laughs> really yeah. That that's it, just their normal price. No sign. And then yeah. you're led to believe that you're getting this good deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if car salespeople can do that to people walking on the lot, there's nothing stopping you from going on Indiegogo and selling two units for 35 bucks each. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you still offer it on your website. I mean, Indiegogo might say, hey, you got to cease selling on your website. Right. But to be able to tap into their community, which is almost as big as Kickstarter, you might want to just, hey, yeah, that's what you're going to have to do on Indiegogo because that's what we did with the travel pillow. We had to cease orders, pre-orders on the website, just temporarily cease the orders and make everybody go to the Indiegogo site. Oh, wow. But you could theoretically maybe get $10,000 on Indiegogo because of their community. Mm. You know what I mean? I see. I see. Yeah. These are next level strats that I've never, yeah. never considered. Yeah. That's and, and, wild. And, and then you got to do a Pinterest. A Pinterest. That, that's a, Pinterest, that's um, like a picture sharing site, right? Start, start loading up some of your photos on Pinterest. Okay. And then what you want to do is... Here's a couple of tricks, right? So on your Indiegogo, I mean your Instagram. Yeah. You want to put a bit.ly link here. Oh. Okay. So you can track if people are clicking. So say you're doing something here on the post and then you do a post, right? Yeah. What's going to happen is there's two things you can do on Instagram. So you can follow other people. Mm -hmm. And if you have a bin, bit.ly link here and you're following people, most people that you follow, they're going to try to see who followed you or followed them. So, like, say I go to um, here, right? Hang on. Let me try to do this. Twitter is probably a better example. And you got to do a Twitter. Oh, really? Okay. Twitter. Yeah. Because Twitter has this way to go viral, right? Hmm. And let's just say for this, do you have a Twitter account? No. Like if if you get something on, on Twitter and it goes viral, it actually leads to like some sales, a lot of sales, right? Really? How do you... So what so, happens on Twitter hmm. is, and this is kind of, I'm trying to find somebody. Let's see. Let me find. Is it hard to go viral on Twitter? Do you have to have like a lot of followers already or is it kind of like TikTok? No, you, you don't random? need to, right? This was the account I did for like Bandit Wallet, right? And I'll kind of tell you quickly how I got something viral, right? So mm -hmm. obviously when... On my profile, I had a bit.ly link, right? Let me find my profile. So I had a bit.ly link here, right? Mm -hmm. 
or going straight to the Kickstarter. And so what happens on, on Twitter is, say, I just type in. So what I did was there was this other wallet called Party Wallet. Oh, I like that picture you're selling. That's cool. Yeah. So I noticed Krabby Wallet did like two hundred fifty thousand dollars on Kickstarter, right? Jeez. Yeah, terrible wallet, but yeah, yours looks way better than that. Yeah. But I noticed a lot of people was tweeting about him, right? And so I would I would find I would find people talking about the Krabby Wallet, right? So knowing that they're into small wallets, right? So like this guy goes, oh, and a new Krabby wallet. And so I'd follow this guy, right? Okay. And then when when he's going, oh, especially on Twitter, they're like, oh, somebody followed me, right? And then they would go to my profile and then I had my wallet up here mm. and the link. And so it'd be like, I follow 50 people like that guy. And then I get maybe five people to buy the wallet. Mm. But all I did was like follow a hundred people. It's like, <laughs> right. Kind of like pro proximity type of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And then another thing I did was. Let's see if I can find it. So I tricked the algorithm of Twitter so at one oh. point I was able to take previous backers, right? And I told them, I'll give you a free wallet to review, right? And try it out. So I, I did 25 people. I sent 25 people this bandit wallet before I, I, I launched on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And I told them all they had to do was do a tweet and it was a specific tweet see right here lester low got a free wallet from me i told him all he had to do was do a tweet and add kickstarter uncrate at cool material and gear patrol so when you see that at gear patrol that means they're getting the notification too Right. Oh, okay. So when 25 people tweeted about the bandit, they're like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> so I got Cool Material and Gear Patrol to write about. And Gear Patrol was big. Like, I yeah. after Kickstarter, I was still getting sales from Gear Patrol because they put me on as one of the top 10 best minimal wallets out there. Oh, nice. Right. But I tricked them, remember? Like, I had 25 people I gave the wallet to, and they loved it. Mm -hmm. And they, one of the things they had to do was either open up a Twitter account and tweet this. And then see my kick track? I was able to track it. Oh, that's, that's, an, that's like Bitly kind of thing? or Yeah, so you can use Bitly or kick track, right? Oh, or, I see. What is it? I think it's... Uh, I wonder why I chose kick track. But anyway. Oh, because kick. No, no, that was the short thing for um, the Kickstarter link. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I was only using the bit.ly on the profile. But as hmm. far as this, I was going straight to the Kickstarter. I see. I see. What I wanted people to do was they saw the image. So whatever the friends they had. They had a link to go straight to the Kickstarter. Gotcha. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, so it's it's basically just trying to like predict the habits of people, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And especially the habits of the people writing online. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you just basically like got twenty five people to just right give them a whole bunch of notifications and it basically forced them to look at your product and they liked it and then it was just golden from there that's yeah, awesome so, so the 25 that that tweeted out there all of a sudden it started going viral because everybody started sharing it and, and a lot had to do with everybody saw the nickel and the wallet 
So yeah, these are really good hacks. Um, yeah, like gro- I don't know if they're called growth hacks, but like going viral hacks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, it was like, you know. So if you go on all the social spaces, so you got like Twitter, you got Pinterest, right? And you, you, you have, there's probably other ones you should be on too, right? But you get on, get on all of them and then you got to create a Facebook page. A mm-hmm. Facebook page. Yeah, I do have a Facebook page, but it's, it's not specifically for Cup of Bug. It's, it's for the... The cup of bug is just the product, and then there's Solid Factory. That's the company. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit confusing, but I, I have a Facebook page, but it's not. Cup yeah. So, so one thing you could do is like, maybe you could say to the Kickstarter backers, "Hey, I'm going to give away five cup of bugs." Hmm. And in order for you to be part of the random drawing. All you have to do is send a tweet out there about Cup of Bug. Oh, yeah. And sacrifice them a little bit. And then then you're just going to give away five. And hopefully everybody from the Kickstarter helps to push out a tweet for you. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Mobilize the the Cup of Bug family. (laughs) Yeah. Because we we believe in your product, right? I mean, that's that's the reason why, like, of, of all the people right now, I wanted to promote first was you. Oh, because... thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad. It is really good to talk to you too. We've talked um, a bit before and during the 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 or before this and also during the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, you you're all. I know you're a cool guy. Yeah. The, that's cool. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to reach out to the kick. Some of them. Some of the Kickstarter backers have followed the 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 instagram accounts and like i love interacting with them and yeah maybe i could do like a little giveaway i would love to do a giveaway um i don't know yeah i i feel like i feel like i i've i've, I've bugged everyone so many times with the kickstarter updates though and i kind of left that the last one did you see the last one i said that that was going to be my last time like oh that's right <laughs> everyone so i feel kind of I, I would feel bad if i like went over there but I hope I really hope all the kick uh, the Kickstarter backers go on my Instagram because yeah I you know I really do value you guys and you guys were the first ones so or yeah. even on, on your what Instagram right so Sorry, what? on your Instagram and your TikTok right now you can you can say you're doing a giveaway yeah right yeah I would love to do that um I could. I don't know exact. I've never done like one of those giveaways where they're supposed to like tag people. So I don't even know how to keep track of who is tagged so I can put it like you, you put it in a, you somehow list all the people who have done the, the requirement for the giveaway. And then you put it into like a random number generator and pick like the person who wins or something like that. Yep. I see. Yeah. I need to learn how to do that too. Um, I will. I will figure that out and then do that. That'd be really cool. I think. I think people would really like that because I know. I also know a couple bug is kind of expensive too. So I just want people who, who might be not able to afford it to be able to get one too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Like, no, thanks for for your time. Right. This, this yeah. Is- a yeah, two-part thing <laughs> yeah i would love to come back again andrew and talk to you um and yeah i will let you know i'll try to do all this homework and uh, figure out how to how to get um onto those blogs and everything and hopefully yeah we can grow this and i really appreciate you loving the cup of bug it's a huge compliment and um i just and by the way since you're a kickstarter backer and I want you to make be really happy with your product. Like if you ever get any issues with the the product, you know, I know like cuz you have basically a pre-production product. You let me know, like don't be shy or anything. It could be years down the line and I will 
send you a new one. Yeah. This, this thing is solid, man. <laughs> I yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's which a, one? Let me let me see. Which one do you have? Can you show the handle really quick? I mean, I can verify which one it is. Does he, do you have the clear string or the the non clear string? Uh, looks like it's a uh, white, right? White string inside yeah, there. See, but is it is it about the string inside? Oh, it's black. Oh yeah, yeah. The it's string. black. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's solid though. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, it's cup of bug. You know, I'm. I'm always trying to improve the product and figure out how to make something even, you know, more user friendly and better. So, and I, 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 I really, you know, want to make sure that the Kickstarter people know that they did not get gypped. Like they, they have, uh, you know, my, you know, guarantee that if there's any other issue with the cup of like, like you let me know and I will get you a new one. Yeah. So. It's pretty solid, man. A great job. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. The supplier did a really good job with making it too. So I'm really happy. Yeah. But so yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you an email this week on some marketing tips, right? Sure. Hopefully we'll, we'll circle back around and, and see where you're at. And, and if you hit some walls and we maybe we can just jump on the phone and brainstorm some more. Right. That sounds really good. Thank you so much, Andrew, for letting yep. me and, the people who view this on YouTube, like tap into the marketing mind and it's, it's, it's eye-opening even for me. I've been doing, you know, making products, but never with a marketing um, background. So it's good. Yeah. It's incredible how much you raised, right? Knowing that you did very little marketing. So good job. Yeah. Bob. Yeah. We tried. Yeah. I got lucky with all the TikTok followers and they're so, they're so awesome. Yeah. Before. All right. Thanks Andrew. again. I'll let you know okay. when I post these up. Right. Wait. Sorry. What? I'll let oh, you know. You when I post them up on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Is it gonna be on your your? Are you gonna make a new channel for it, or are you gonna use the the tactical one? Tactical victory one. Okay. Yeah. I'll 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 follow it on my account on my YouTube. Yeah. And then I'll I'll blast. Uh, I got an email list of over a thousand backers that want to be known. They, they want to be notified. I got approval for them to get notified on new products. So Okay. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, Andrew. I mean, honestly, even this knowledge is worth it a thousand percent. Like, if, you know, that's asking for too much. And I don't want to, I don't want to put that pressure on you. I know you offered it, but honestly, I'm here for the knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Everything I'm going to do on this channel is product, products that I feel should get out there and everybody should buy. So Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to hear about or right, listening on the other conversations you have with other Kickstarter um, entrepreneurs too. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again. It. And you have a great night. You too. All right. Thank you, Andrew.